your host, Miss Silla Black. You should all be very familiar, I hope, with the concept of theoretical blind date. What we're going to have today is some people with real world energy problems. And we're going to have three theories who think they've got the answer to those problems. And it's our job to match up the theory with the problem. Who do we think is going to help us solve our sustainable energy crisis? Behaviour <laughs> change, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Of course. I'm Behaviour Change. I'm really interested in people. I love people. I really like to know how people think, why they think in certain ways, and why they behave in certain ways. It is. I spend my whole day doing these daily practices. I wake up, I have breakfast, I go to work, I do star jumps, that's my personal favourite. Um, and then, you know, all that sort of thing. But it's lonely doing it on your own. So, I'm hoping you can find me someone to do my practices with. <laughs> 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 the theory, that's quite an outfit. Tell us yeah, about your outfit. Well, it, it, this outfit reflects my great interest in systems, in changing systems, in how do you do it? Policies, regulations, I like a tinker, I like a little fiddle. <laughs> That's what I'm really all about with my tools. What sort of real non energy problem are you looking for tonight? Bloody great big ones. Great big ones. <laughs> Transport, agriculture. Something you can get on. Oh, something <laughs> Well, I'm sure we've got the real world energy problem in your dreams just no, waiting right. somewhere outside that door. Well, I'm Brenda the Businesswoman. I've made my name in the energy sector, but I now realise that we need to move towards a more sustainable energy system. So I think solar panels, photovoltaics are a great energy solution here, but also a great business opportunity for me. And I want to find someone that shares my passion. So people aren't buying my solar panels quickly enough. We're not reaching the government targets that have been set for 2020, and with cuts to feed in tariffs, my business is really on the rails here. So I want to know how to get people hot about solar power. It's really quite simple. We need to understand better why it is that people aren't doing that, and actually target them with information that they can understand, information that they feel is relevant, and help them to change their behaviour. It's really quite simple. To solve your problem, we need to understand those practices and go with them. So when people are at B&Q getting new kitchens and bathrooms or getting double glazing, that's the time to think about adding PV onto the list of building works they're already going to do. Because they're already doing those practices. So, you know, I'm a big fan of do-it-yourself. I'm very active and very practical, as you can see. And I'm planning to redecorate my bedroom soon, Brenda. So, you know, maybe we could get together and instead of do-it-yourself, it could be more a case of... Do it together. <laughs> the problem you've got is the market is loaded in favour of the big six suppliers, the big bad six. You're fighting against the system here. I would invite you to join me in the lobby, not the lobby of a CD pay by the Al Hotel, but the political lobby, Brenda. Come on, we need to change the rules. Let's rewrite the rules together. Let's see what the room thinks. If you think it's behaviour, shout behaviour on three. If you think transition, shout transitions on three. One, two, three. Behaviour! Oh, it's a split audience. There's no solutions there. No. Brenda, the big decision is yours. I'm going to play it safe, I'm going to go for behaviour. As you all know, this is a game show, and we're going to send these to this lovely couple off on an exciting, fantastic day, somewhere in the world, to solve this solar problem, to sell some solar. Shall we see where you're going? Yes, please. Take a look at the screens. Yeah! Yay! You're right. So we need to reduce energy demand, energy demand now to create a secure, sustainable, and affordable energy system. But my problem is, how can we actually get people to change what they do in their homes? Okay. Because energy use is just an outcome of the things that we do in our daily lives. Energy use is an outcome of relaxing, of cooking, washing, travelling. So Polly, if your problem is about reducing domestic energy use, that means we need to think differently about what people do in their daily lives, about these daily practices, and how can we change those? And you know, maybe if we're able to save some energy on the electricity bill, 
We can think of a more energetic thing to do together afterwards. <laughs> Let's get to the heart of the problem. Energy is too cheap. And Holly, you don't sound like a cheap lady to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not properly priced, and we need to grab this problem by the fiscals. <laughs> You've dabbled in the past, but are you ready to go all the way with a carbon tax? Come on, Polly, let's do the full Monty. As you all know, I don't advocate a hugely radical approach. My approach is much more incremental, much more step by step. The way I deal with issues is by actually understanding why it is that we have a problem in the first place and targeting individuals, making sure that individuals have the right set of means and context in order to make decisions that lead in the direction that we want them to go. Have you made your mind up? Yes, I okay. On the drum roll, let us know who your theoretical blind date is going to be. <laughs> I'm going to go with my public, and I'm going to pick practice. The popular choice! <laughs> so, let's find out where you guys are going to do your, your fantastic vacation. Oh! <laughs> You're off to reduce domestic energy demand in delightful Doncaster. <laughs> involved in the Jubilee debt campaign, I did anti-nuclear for a bit, but what's really kind of getting me at the moment, what I really feel strongly about is fuel poverty. Fuel poverty is a big problem which affects the most vulnerable in our society. So my question is, how are you going to help? It's about the ageing building stock in this country, about the hard to heat homes. What we need here is a large scale nationwide retrofit. I know that doesn't sound sexy, but we're talking long-term policies. We're talking subsidies and building regulations. Insulation is all about you values, Karen. This solution is about me and you in the long term. <laughs> <laughs> and let's think about the way that we heat our homes as a, as a whole society. It used to be the case that houses would be unheated during the day when people were out, and in the evening you'd just heat one room and the whole family would sit together. Well, nowadays, houses are heated all day long, all the house is heated, and in the evenings, everybody's in their own separate rooms. So again, this isn't a problem with, with heating bills or with insulation or, or with what temperature you want it. It's a societal problem with the way we live in our homes. We actually need to ban the TVs in the bedrooms so we can get on with something else instead. <laughs> so we need to understand why it is that even the fuel poor in those at hand cannot pay for the fuel bills want that standard of living. Why is it that they're cranking up their temperature at home? And so my um, um, suggestion here is that actually we need to go inside people's heads. We need to understand why it is that they're thinking in that way. We need to convince them that they can live at lower temperatures. The decision is yours, Karen. Have you made your mind up? I think I have. Can you have? Okay, on the drum roll. Why not let us know? I'm feeling a bit rad. I'm going to go transition. Woo! Tuck her up, guys, because you're about to be <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Karen, first impressions, transition to the theory of your dreams? Yeah, well, he's, he's not my normal type. <laughs> <laughs> and transition, do you think you've got what it takes to solve Karen's uh, social angst, to solve well, her poverty? Yes, I, I mean, I do have a wilder side. I'm actually naked. <laughs> we find out where they're going? Yeah. Yes. Oh, so... Fabulous Fiji! <laughs> Let's just recap on what's happened in today's show. We've got three delightful theories who understand the way we think about and use energy in very, very different ways. And we have three people come on with real-world energy problems. First, we have Brenda the businesswoman. And off she went with behaviour change to go and sell some solar by getting into people's minds, marketing it and communicating in new ways. Next, we welcome Polly the policymaker, and she was concerned about radically reducing domestic demand. She wasn't sure who to pick, but in the end she plumped for social practice theory, and what a fine couple they met, they, they met. I'm sure they're going to go off and try something different, and really get people to do things in new ways. And then last, but by no means least, we welcome Karen the campaigner, who was concerned about fuel poverty. And she ended up plumping for transitions theory, who thought this was a systemic issue. It was about new forms of regulation and retrofit. 
You helped us put those couples together, and I'm sure that we've made some wonderful decisions to help solve any of the problems. Thank you, and good night.